Hi, welcome to my talk at the Media Forensics Workshop at CVPR. My name is Kate Sayenka. I'm a professor at Boston University and also at the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab. And the topic I'll discuss today is AI-generated misinformation and how we should approach it. Here's the outline of the talk. So I will first discuss the threats of AI-generated content and how we can exploit its weaknesses uh, in, in detection. And then I'll talk about a particular approach to detecting neural fake news and conclude with some final thoughts. So we are really living in the era of AI-generated content right now. We've all seen GANs uh, that can generate very realistic looking photos of people that don't exist or even cats that don't exist and even Airbnb rentals that don't exist in real life. And at the same time, language models are becoming scarily large and um, scarily effective at fooling people into thinking that they are seeing human written text. For example, GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters and uh, other models, more recent models have even more parameters and they're trained on lots and lots of data. Um, and in fact, um, this was a uh, paper that took GPT and trained it on news um, articles and uh, trained it to generate very realistic sounding news articles. So just the text of the article given a headline. This is called Grover by Rowan Zellers et al. And it can generate very realistic uh, article text. Here's an example of such an article from our data set that I'll talk about later. Um, and here, so here, um, the image and caption are real, but the article is generated. But at the same time, as I said, the image generators are becoming better and better. Um, so we could use images to add to this fake text content to make it even more engaging. So these are examples from DALI um, on the left for the text guided generation where the text is cats, cats playing chess. And on the right, uh, the text is person being chased by a dinosaur in a fire. So it you know, really will generate seemingly pretty much anything you want. Um, and so there are even companies that, so if you want to look up Jasper is one of these companies, uh, but there are many of them that are marketing this as a tool for people to create their own content using AI. So, for example, you know, if you don't want to spend time or you just want to generate social media posts or blog posts or marketing content quickly, um, and it will look very realistic, it will look like a human wrote it, but you don't have to do much, you know, will, the AI will do it for you. So, obviously, there are some good applications of, of that kind of uh, AI generation, but there are also some not so good applications, which is what I'll talk about today. So when we think about malicious or not so good AI generated content, you know, there are many things that come to mind, of course, you know, fake resumes. Um, here's an example of a, a resume that's generated by a um, model. This is actually a real example of apparently a spy who used AI generated um, images to create a fake profile on LinkedIn and um, you know, look like a real person with a real uh, profile because there's a picture of them, right? Um, and as I already mentioned, fake Airbnb listings that can be used to uh, trick people and um, steal from people, essentially. Uh, now with uh, video deepfakes or face swapping and animation, there's some good applications. So here's a news anchor that uh, where they used her model to essentially generate news coverage without actually ha her having to do it. Uh, but there's also things like this where, you know, there's a rumor that um, President uh, Vladimir Putin, President of Russia, had used deepfakes to pretend that he was in a meeting while he was actually getting, you know, surgery or something else was going on. Um, and then there is uh, the threat of fake news, uh, fake social media campaigns, misinformation, you know, uh, about vaccines or climate change or really uh, politics, what have you. So um, 
so that's kind of what I want to focus on is this danger that um, we could see a lot of uh, content being generated as clickbait or even directed misinformation or to create information overload. And the problem is that uh, there now have been several studies showing that humans find these, this generated content to be as or more trustworthy than real human written content. Um, and there's even a study that uh, found that cybersecurity experts were fooled by AI generated threat descriptions or cy cyber, cyber threats, um, right? Reports of supposed threats um, that looked realistic enough to fool the experts. And so that could really take away uh, time from following up on real cyber threats. So this is uh, another kind of, you know, malicious use of this. Right, so uh, there could be some kind of large scale campaign, um, even, you know, by state actors to generate misinformation at scale to sway an election outcome or to, you know, promote some something else, some agenda, but um, it will be so, so large scale that it will sow confusion, it will distract, it will sort of, uh, you know, distract people or even convince people. So now, in addition to misinformation, there's another type of threat, uh, which is the erosion of trust, right? So as we see these hyper-realistic deep fakes, um, images and videos and text, we are starting to not believe necessarily that even real videos are real, because we've now seen, the public has seen that AI can be used to really behave like a human being, to copy someone, to make it look like someone is doing something they didn't. So now um, there will be an issue of this erosion of trust that people will not even believe real content when they see it because they'll think it's AI generated. Okay, so uh, assuming that we want to detect these kinds of malicious uh, uses and detect when we see text that is, uh, or, or I'll focus on news content really in this talk, but uh, more broadly, any kind of content. How can we exploit weaknesses? So I will not talk about detecting fake images, but I'll point you to this paper from two years ago at CVPR, uh, where um, the authors found that generated images were actually very easy to spot for now. I think that's largely still the case. But, you know, this technology is getting better. Um, also, when we talk about just the single modality, detecting generated text alone um, is also, you know, easy depending on what, what kind of text you're looking at or hard. So in this case, this is from a study that looked at uh, various detectors that you see. The columns here are different detectors that are just language models that are used as generators, but with an extra layer, classification layer uh, added on top of them, and they're trained on real and fake examples. And so, um, as you see, these different rows are different domains um, uh, of generated text from news articles for Grover, and then Go Motions is a Reddit data set, uh, and there are a few other data sets here. So, actually, you can see that. Um, the accuracy is quite high, uh, above 90% on in-domain longer text, greater than 100 or 200 words. But as you get to shorter text, accuracy drops to 70 or 80%. And if you uh, start looking at out-of-domain data, out-of-distribution data, so uh, data generated by a model that the detector wasn't trained on, um, so on this kind of out-of-distribution data, accuracy drops even further. So what can we exploit then in addition to training such detectors? Uh, well, we can think of maybe some semantic features. Um, and certainly one of them is realism or coherency. Is the text coherent or the kind of the facts following each other in a logical um, sequence, logical order? Is the image realistic? Um, there's factual consistency. Uh, for example, you know, if you read this article closely, I just took this from uh, the this news does not exist and the images generated from Dali Mini. But if you look at the article, you'll see that it kind of uh, story jumps between 
locations that are far away that wouldn't happen in real life. Um, but I'm not going to talk about those two. I will focus more on consistency between the modalities. So in the case of news, this would be the consistency between the text of the article and then the, the image and the caption of the image. Okay, so um, we'll look at this and we're going to use this threat model uh, where the photo and the caption uh, or just the photo perhaps is given to uh, it, it is real and then the model is also given a headline and it can generate the text or optionally also the caption and then we're going to try to get this okay so this is from a paper called detecting cross-modal inconsistency to defend against neural fake news with Ruben Tan, Brian Plummer and myself so here we are um, creating this model that takes the article, text, the images and captions, encodes them and tries to predict if the input was real or generated. And the idea that we are trying to add here um, on top of just training the detector on fake and real examples is can we use some semantics? Like can we also look at the cross-modal consistency between the text and the image uh, and additionally, also, you'll notice here that the named entities are not always consistent. Um, so we create named entity as a separate feature um, so that the model can learn to check, okay, if is the prime minister in the text article the same as the prime minister in the caption or in the, potentially in the photo? So uh, this work was the first to address both the visual and the linguistic aspect of detecting fake neural news. And we also collected a new data set called Neural News, which is based on a good news data set and Grover. Um, and we did some studies with humans as well. Um, and we proposed this model that um, we think is a good baseline, basically. And, and other people have since used this data set and this model as a baseline and improved upon it. Um, so the data set is um, uh, composed of real articles that you see here. They're from the New York Times. And then we also have generated articles and generated captions where the images are still real from the original article. And we also have real articles and generated captions and generated articles and real captions. Now the first problem we run into here is that we have limited training data. So to, to um, uh, get around this, we decided that we can actually augment the training data just by uh, creating mismatched real images and captions. And we want to do this so that we create more examples of inconsistencies for our model to learn about. Right. So in the positive pairs, this is just the original image caption, article, text, but the negative pairs have uh, text from more one article and then photo captions from another article so that there'll be inconsistencies between them. All right, so um, the model overview is here. I'll just go through it at a very high level. So first we take the image and detect objects and represent them uh, as encoded vectors. And we also encode the caption and article words. We use the BERT encoder, but Others could be used here. Then we compute cross interactions or cross correlations between objects and caption words. Um, and then we also add the article representation to combine the overall representation. And this is where we also add our binary named entity indicator that I mentioned earlier. So this is just an indicator that says for each named entity mentioned, does it appear in the caption or the article um, so that this is just a feature that we add. Okay, and finally, there are a couple of layers that are essentially uh, classification layers to predict a binary label, real or fake. Okay, so um, before I get into the results of this model, um, I want to talk about the, the human evaluation we did. So here we took our data set and we showed it to real people and we asked them to rate the articles on four different aspects. And, and we took this uh, protocol from the Grover paper. 
where they did the same thing. Um, but here, this was not misinformation per se, this was just from the New York Times, so the articles themselves didn't, weren't specifically trying to be uh, misinformation or disinformation. Um, and so we saw that essentially people uh, give pretty similar ratings to both real, so real here is type A um, on style, content, consistency, and trustworthiness uh, versus um, fake. So type A is real, type B is real, type C and type D are fake. You can see that there's not much difference between them in terms of how human annotators rated them. Um, and so this kind of, again, is just another um, a confirmation that people can be easily fooled, uh, not realize that they're reading something that was written, written by a machine. Uh, although that wasn't the specific task here, but in terms of, again, trustworthiness and consistency. So um, now getting into the automatic detection results. So as I mentioned, we have um, these um, uh, mismatched augmented data that I talked about, where we mismatched some, some real articles to add it to our training data. And then we also created this named entity indicator. So those are kind of the two interesting components in our model that we added. Um, so we're ablating them here one by one, and you see that um, here also at training time, we did not have any generated articles at all. So it's a very difficult setup here because it was only trained on real articles. Um, and so if we uh, try, you know, Grover Mega Detector uh, versus Grover Large here, I'm only showing Grover Mega. Um, Mega is... Um, uh, smaller than large, I believe. Uh, we see that the accuracy of CCA is a little bit above chance. Um, with our model, we call it Dieden. It's a little bit better, but when we add the named entity indicator, it becomes quite a bit better, although still not great. Uh, but that's kind of evidence that the named entity mismatch uh, is, is a useful semantic feature. Okay, and then so now we're actually starting to train on generated articles using articles generated by Grover from our data set. Um, and then we're also breaking this down between how, what percentage of articles uh, are generated in training. So here it's 25% or 50% uh, generated articles with the rest being real. So um, there are a lot of numbers here, but basically the overall takeaway is that Adding the named entity indicator again improves results. Um, overall results are better. And then training with this augmented data, mismatch data also improves results. Um, and then when we put the two together, it's really when we start seeing uh, major improvement. Um, so actually, I think the large is smaller than the mega, and this is why the mega is performing better. So typically, the larger the language model is, the better it will be at detecting, um, uh, you know, at detecting real or fake text. All right. So um, overall, you know, this is a promising, I would say, promising um, result showing that these kinds of mismatch detector features could be useful. Um, although, of course, it's not the full story. Here's an example prediction on the article that I showed you at the beginning of the talk, where um, if you look closely at this article, you actually see that it talks about uh, one person um, named John Vernick in the actual body of the article that who um, jumped out of an ambulance and um, in the caption text, you see that it's talking about a different person called Yevgeny Kralkin. So there's immediately there, you see there's a mismatch in the named entities. So this model is not um, very good at maintaining that consistency. Here's another sample prediction on another article. This, is, this happens to be a real article and our prediction is also that it's real. And so finally, um, you know, this was uh, just one approach, as I mentioned, that other um, researchers 
had followed up on this and had some uh, more interesting ideas and improved performance. Uh, but I want to end my talk by sort of bringing up a few uh, broader issues here. So where do we see, or I should say, where do I see this heading in the future? Well, this is one kind of scenario that probably is still pretty far away, but you know, eventually someone could generate a whole movie completely um, from scratch, you know, or potentially with some minimal input like a rough plot. Um, but of course, we're not there yet, but you know, we're getting there. So with each individual modality, we're seeing better and better generation capabilities. Um, so these single modality deepfakes, um, as they're getting better, they're getting harder to detect. And so, um, you know, that's one issue. Uh, we can still, I would say, keep ahead um, of malicious content, detect, can still detect malicious content if we know what generators are being used. Uh, because as I talked about earlier, if you train on the exact same generator, you typically can do very well. Um, but we're not guaranteed that we'll always know what generator the um, attacker or the, the malicious actor used to create the content. Another issue is uh, that these are detectors could be attacked adversarially. In fact, they can be attacked adversarially and it does um, change, it, it does drop the performance in terms of detection. Um, and so uh, potentially the kinds of consistency features that I talked about where we look at inconsistencies between modalities in order to detect uh, generated content and fake content. Um, in addition with some world knowledge, some fact checking. So I didn't talk about fact checking or, or inserting world knowledge here, but I think that could be um, another way definitely that we can try to detect these things. Um, and so hopefully this will, uh, the, these models, although they will certainly improve in how well they can match across modalities, but hopefully this will still lag behind and we can exploit that in detection. Um, another, um, I think, very interesting and useful approach potentially is um, using online context and, and facts that uh, appear out there on the web that come from trusted sources that you can uh, have the model automatically compare the new content in question to existing trusted content online and look for inconsistencies, right? So this is one example um, from a paper from uh, Technical University of Munich and Google AI where they uh, look at this case, you know, where you have uh, an image and a caption, and then you can find, you know, the same, essentially the same caption was already used. So, so for this Obama um, uh, image on the right, the fake caption claims that uh, they're all visiting the Wuhan lab in 2015 for BAT project. The original caption uh, says that President Obama and Dr. Fauci are visiting the NIH lab in Maryland in 2014, right? So if you can find the original caption, you can use that to, um, and they use that here to detect this kind of inconsistency. So I think that's another fairly promising um, approach. And then, you know, for the broader problem, of course, what I talked about is just looking at whether or not some piece of text and images um, embedded in them if they're real or, or fake uh, or AI generated. But the broader problem is, of course, just um, uh, more complicated because we want to typically detect bots that are posting this kind of information, right? Um, and they're being used uh, for fraud or being used for misinformation campaigns. And in, in that broader problem, um, people use other kinds of features, for example, how these bots are posting, you know, their behavior online, uh, what the profiles look like, what other profiles are they connected with in, in a network, 
um, how well are they coordinating with other accounts? That's another uh, useful feature that people are looking at. Right, so all of that can be used in addition to the kinds of detectors that I talked about today. And then um, the other uh, issue here is that, of course, we uh, don't just want to know that something is AI generated. Potentially, we also want to know is it actually malicious or is it legitimate, right? So um, as I showed you at the beginning, there are companies that are trying to make products that will generate content. So there'll be lots of legitimate AI generated content online. And what the kinds that we want to know, we actually probably don't want to flag all of it, right? We want to flag only the kind that is concerning. Uh, and this will be things like propaganda or clickbait or Deepfake pornography is a really big issue. This is, you know, probably one of the, the biggest applications of GANs right now out there on the web. Um, other kinds of illegal content, phishing and uh, other kinds of scam, um, types of scams. So characterizing the content in that sense uh, is also a, a pretty important problem. And so um, to conclude, I just want to leave you with this quote um, uh, that I, I took it from this paper where the link is at the bottom but I really like the quote so it says that humans learn about the world by collectively acquiring information filtering it and sharing what we know and misinformation undermines this process the repercussions are extensive without reliable and accurate sources of information we cannot hope to halt climate change make reasoned democratic decisions or control a global pandemic. So I'll leave you with that and um, I'll stop here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much for listening.